Hmm. Hello, knockouts. Tanya TKO here. And I'm a self-love specialist from tanyatko.com. I hope you learn how to love yourselves and one another. This conversation is one that many of you thought would come up soon. And I, some of you say, okay, so, wow, okay, you know what, listen, let me start over. I'm a self-love specialist from tanyatko.com. I hope you learn how to love yourselves and one another. On this channel, we use viral video topics as teachable moments for what self-love or self-abuse looks like in our own lives. On this channel, though, we speak about viral subjects and sometimes people who are famous or, or well-known, the video itself is not about them. The video is about you and what self-love looks like in your own life. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a touchy topic, dealing with intimate assault of a minor specifically listening to Roxanne Chante, who says that DMX is someone that she knew from when she was young. And according to the things that he told her, she broke down into tears and talked about what she, how she knew what it was like to be in vulnerable positions where you're too young to defend yourself against the advances of uncles and people's fathers, et cetera. I want you to hear in her own words, we're going to play that for you. We're also going to play the clip with DMX where he talks about getting tricked into smoking crack um, from a 30 year old Reddy Ron. And so there are a few different things. So DMX died this past week, right? And I'm gonna say this, if there is anybody who is feeling triggered by this topic, bow out, come back on another day when, you, when, when things are more under control for you right? This is something that we're going to talk about. And there are going to be a lot of people who come in. So write your comments. If I don't see your comments, repost your comment. If you want me to read your comment on air, you can send it to, you can send a text to the cash app, which is dollar sign Tanya TKO. I'll put the banner down beneath. And if we have enough time, I will turn on the phone lines so that we can discuss this live with one another. So get ready for that. Um, there are a thousand people on here now. Go ahead and thumbs up the video, share the video. And if this video was shared with you and you don't know how to find it back again, my name is Tanya TKO. Make sure that you subscribe or click the follow button or something, forward this to your own mail so that you know how to find us again. All right, so let's 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 jump into the first video. In the first video, we're going to listen to a tearful DMX talk about how he was tricked into crack, smoking crack, when he was 14 by a man at the time who was 30. So some of you have said, why was a 30-year-old man hanging out with a 14-year-old boy? Others of you have said that the veracity, the ferocity, the veracity of DMX's tears were more profuse and more profound than than maybe just you know the addiction. Some of you said that if a man is willing to cross those boundaries with a child, what other boundaries is he willing to cross? So today we're going to be diving into it and talking about it all, right? And Nadifrique is saying. Um, DMX has assault charges against him as well, intimate assault. Does he? I, I did not know that. If you have something, send it to my email, tanyatko.com, click on contact, and um, and let me see that because I had not heard that before. This is my first time hearing it. If you know something that we don't know, please send that there, and I will take a look at what it is that you have because I, I have not heard that myself. All right, so in this video, I'm going to jump in and out of the, the footage for the video because the video is copyrighted and this company is going after people who are playing the video. So I'm going to play just the sound of it and then click back over when he begins to cry so that you can see the profound way in which he is in tears. All right, so let's, uh, this is, give me a second. Hold on, let me take the video down and we're just gonna listen to the audio, okay? And then I'll come back when, like I said, when he um, when he begins to cry, just so you can see how he's crying. Up. And as I'm counting the money. Hold on, let me rewind that. 
just a moment. Oh, wow. So he said the monster was born. Whew. Okay. So we know from reading his biography in that video, um, and in the video where we first spoke about DMX, we know from his biography that his mother abused him. She allowed um, her boyfriend to also abuse him. She. So let's let's listen to Roxanne Shante. Uh, what are some of your thoughts on on that? Um, so Monica is saying that he was so young. This is crushing her. Um, Sierra is saying, "Who laced the blunt?" Um, it's like he was having flashbacks. Uh, so who did lace it? In the story, it sounded like Reddy Ron had laced it. Go back to that video and watch the whole video. And Reddy Ron has come out since DMX has died. So he waited all of the time while DM after the allegations had come out. He waited all of that time, and then he waited until after DMX died and could no longer speak from the grave. He then came out and said, oh, I never laced, I never gave him this, that, and the other. But, I mean, who do you believe? You believe this tearful DMX? or some guy who will come out after DMX has died to, to defend himself. So, all right. So you all are giving your, all right. Let me, so somebody is saying, um, I don't think it was sexual. Wait until you hear from Roxanne Chante. She, I'm allowing a few more people to come in before we play the clip because people come in late. But as we spoke about in the last video, we're going to find a solution to be able to get you a text every time I go live. That way you don't ever miss another video. I'm going to read the cash app that has come through. Um, Kaisha sends $10 and says, support. I love what you do. Thank you so much. I hope I said your name correctly. All right. So listen, let's jump into the Roxanne Chante video because that right there is, is painful to watch. It's a, it's a painful video. And she speaks from personal account, having known him um, when, when they were younger. So all right. So this is Roxanne Shante right here. She was a rapper back in the days. Many of you know her from, um, from her music in the 80s. Uh, some of you know her from the documentary that came out like a year or two ago. All right, here we go. Hey, um, let me um let me tell y'all something. And this is one of the this is one of the most serious things that I've ever said. Maybe even one of the most emotional and personal things that I've ever said. And um, it has to do with DMX, and it, and it has to do with his passing. But not only his passing, but his childhood and what he has went through. What we have went through. Now, my relationship with DMX. We wasn't super close, but we had time enough to be able to talk to each other. And coming from similar backgrounds, there's certain things that I need y'all to understand. When he, and this is not what somebody told me, this is what he said to me. He said, you know, when he was younger, his mom had took him to a, um, a, 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 a children's home and said um, that they was just going to visit. And she left him there. She took him there and she left him there. And he was too little to be there, too little to understand how to defend himself, how to take care of himself and everything else. But he did it and he survived it. And we all have our ways of dealing with it. I've been through that system. I've been through that. I know what it's like when people think that adults don't care about children. I know what it's like to run the streets, sleep on a train, sleep in the hallways, try to sleep at friends' houses, have people tell you you could come stay at their house and their brothers are trying to mess with you or or uh, or even their fathers and adults and uncles and shit. I know what it is like. And we all handle it differently. We all have our demons. Okay. 
So this is the part that I want us to pay attention to. She said that they, she speaks from the we standpoint, what we went through, and she knows what it's like to go to people's houses and their brothers, uncles, fathers try to mess with you in the middle of the night, right? When I first heard this, I, it just, it, it, it just, it stunned me. So listen, a special shout out to Laron who sent this story to me when he heard it. Um, he heard this and he said that he felt that this was her alluding to some sort of intimate um, abuse of, of, you know, there's certain words we can't really say in the YouTube video because it, it gets it gets flagged for demonetization. That's why it's so important to support creators who are bringing the stories to you that you love because when we create videos talking about real subjects like this, you know, YouTube doesn't like certain words and it's not advertiser friendly. So they stop you from being able to, to make a living from the work that you're doing, right? Nonetheless, Laurent brought this story to, to me and I didn't hear it at first, but when I listened to it again, I noticed how she was talking about a shared experience. The first time I heard it, I was like, gosh, why can't, why can't a child stay at at a friend's house without having to be bothered by their brother. And then she added uncle and fathers in it too. Can you imagine how frightening that must be to be a young girl or a young boy sleeping on someone's couch? And then in the middle of the night, you you somebody is troubling you? Like you don't even have the time, the luxury of being innocent because people make you aware of lascivious stuff that then you get blamed for how you should have known better. That's the whole purpose of innocence. They know you don't know better. And it's like, but then they make you know. And then it's up to you to have to live this life on constant defense. I want you to think about the way that DMX was crying about telling that story. You know, hiding behind the shades, head down, not able to talk, getting choked up. And now Roxanne Shante coming out. I'm going to play that part back for you again. And then we're going to skip around through the video because the, the clip that I saw was only a two minute clip. And so I don't know what else she says inside of this video, but I just, I, I just like the world that we live in, like people and their sicknesses. Oh my goodness. And Sonia is saying, leave it alone already. Damn, I don't know who you're talking about, right? But I mean, this is, like I said, if this subject is triggering to anybody, you can click out, you know? Romare is saying, y'all bugging out over the dude death anyway, unless it was the vaccine that killed him. Stop acting like a million junkies ain't died. Wow. You know what? We oh, good. let's let's just I'm not I'm just going to I'm going to ignore that because this is a lot deeper than than just the story of a quote unquote man who was a junkie. This is the story of what led to him self-abusing. Now we listen, this is what we talk about on this channel. We talk about self-abusing in relationships. What led him to the self-abuse? And it started at a time long before he could consent to what was happening to him. So let's finish. Let's let's rewind that Roxanne Shante part. We'll listen to that again, and then we'll skip around in her video. Unbelievable. Folks don't care about children. I know what it's like to run the streets, sleep on a train, sleep in the hallways, try to sleep at friends' houses, have people tell you you could come stay at their house and their brothers are trying to mess with you or or, or even their fathers and adults and uncles and shit. I know what it is like. And we all handle it differently. We all have our demons. You see, we when all you, handle when it differently. Would see me and say how angry I was. They you see how she said, we would all handle it differently. Now, she's not talking about being hooked on a substance like DMX. She's talking about going to people's houses and adults attempting to take advantage of your sexual innocence. And she said, we all handle it differently. 
Was she also referring to DMX? This is what I'm saying. This is one of those situations where we're going to have to look for the arbitrals because she doesn't come out exactly and say it. But in your point of view, what do you think she's actually really communicating here? What do you think she's actually communicating here? And people are saying people can be so insensitive. Using the word triggered is very condescending. It's not really helpful at all if you're bringing up the need to be able to handle people having feelings. No, listen, there, listen, there are things that are triggering to people. Some people are not able to talk about intimate assault. It's triggering. And if this conversation is triggering, you have to do what's right for you and maybe come back at a different time. I don't understand how that's condescending. And if you think that it is condescending, this probably is not the right platform for you. I'm just going to be honest about that, right? And so Tom Foolery is saying some words that I can't say on YouTube, right? Um, so... Angelic is saying the foster care system is atrocious. Foster parents only care about the check and food stamps. The foster child gives, they couldn't care less about the four. I mean, some people don't care. Some people do. Some people care. Some people don't. Um, RC says rocks can't tell it all. All right, let's read some of these cash apps and see what you all have to say. Um, all right. So Brittany says, love what you do. Please read my chat comment. I it, it probably went by too quickly and I didn't see it. If I didn't see it here, um, I'll scroll back and see if I see something from a Brittany. But let's see. Let's see. I don't quite see anything from a Brittany. Um, I don't see anything from, and the chat cuts off after a certain while. Right now there's 2000 people on here between Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter Periscope. So there are a lot of comments coming in and I don't get to see them all. That's why. So if you send the cash app, just repost your comments so that I can see. Jamelia sends a dollar and says, not working right now, but I would like to send you appreciation. Thank you. Let me send you a heart back. I appreciate that, Jamelia. I appreciate that. All right. Sarah sends $20 and says, black people hide from the truth. We need to discuss. Thank you. I don't know why people don't want to talk about this. You know what I mean? This is something that needs to be talked about because we, and then there was, before the show started, some of you on YouTube saw that there was a guy who came in to the chat talking about um, Roxanne Shante has a history of emasculating men. Only black women like to emasculate their men and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, how is being taken advantage of, assaulted when you're a child, how is that emasculating? How is talking about this emasculating? It's not your fault. Something like this happened to you, it's not your fault. This is not a matter of whether or not you're more masculine or less masculine because someone hurt you. No, we have to let go of those ideas. We've got to let go of those ideas. All right, we have Kelly who sends $3 and says, it's so true, kids are not protected. Thank you. And it's like, these type of stories really trouble me because children need to be protected. And Sarah sends another $10 and says, for mental, we need to talk about mental health, trauma, and family discourse. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Kiwana... Kiwana sends $10 and says, thanks for everything. We have been suffering. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's, let's, let's listen to some more of her video and see what other things she had to say. Um, I mean, but you all kind of got that gist that she was talking about more than just herself in that, right? All right, here. They didn't understand what I had endured and what I went through. And when, when I, as, as soon as me and DMX came in contact with each other, as soon as me and Earl came in contact with each other, we already knew what was done mm. to that spirit. And it makes you overly aggressive. It makes you seem angry to people. It makes you seem mad to people. So people try to find whatever they can in order to overcome that. 
Some people turn to drugs. Some people turn to drinking. Some people turn to other things. People wonder why we give so much. Why we? Okay, let's talk. Let's talk, let's talk. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. She says we know what was done to us. Some people turn to drugs, some people turn to alcohol, some people turn to other things. So she's no longer talking about the issue being the the out the um the substance being given to you. The issue is the betrayal of adults to children and intimate assault. You all are following what she's saying, right? She's saying we deal with these things differently. She said, I know what it's like to go over to a friend's house. A friend said, you can stay with me. And then their brother, uncle, or father trouble you in the middle of the night. We all deal with these things differently. Some people turn to alcohol. Some people turn to other drugs. And some people turn to this. So she's saying that the assault is what led leads to the, the addiction. This is what she's talking about. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to read some of these comments and read some of these cash apps. Latanya is saying she suffered from alcohol abuse and it's probably how. Okay. Okay. Brittany sends $20 and says, keep breaking generational curses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's like these things we've got to talk about. You know what? I'm going to open up the phone lines in a moment. We're going to skip around through her video. So get ready to call. Write down the number 323-488-3149. I'm going to open up the lines in a moment. Nicole says, we need to believe children too when they come forward. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Alexis sends $10. Thank you for the support, Alexis. Thank you. Thank you. Mika sends a dollar and says, why are people trying to let the mom off the hook? You know, there were a lot of things that contributed. There were a lot of things that contributed to DMX and many of these other people turning out the ways that they have. Okay, Emily sends $5 and says, we have to protect our black boys just like girls. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we need to understand that some of these sick adults are also troubling boys. Candace sends $2 and says, good standing on sidelines, staying only bad foster. Okay. Absolutely. No, because I know people, I know people who are good foster parents. It's unfortunate that there are some who are not, but I know some people who enter into the system and I'm probably going to take on a foster child or two myself. So I, I, I know there are good people out there who are doing it because of the love. There, are, It's a shame that there are bad people out there doing it for their greedy reasons as well. Ayana sends $2 and says, X was betrayed by adults as a child. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Ayana. Thank you. And Laurent comes out and says $5 and says, can you reach out to her for clarity? You know what? Yes, I will. I'll tag her on, um, I'll tag her on Instagram and ask her to reach out to me. But I wonder if she can really talk about it. Oh no. Kiwana sends $5 and says, my mom didn't believe me until I had a breakdown. I can't even imagine. What does it do to the human spirit to not only be violated by the first person, but then an adult come out when you open and bear yourself for that adult to say that they don't believe you? I, I, I can't imagine. Hugs to you. Hugs to you, Q. I just, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Claire sends $2 and says, we protect predators in the U.S. Do we? You know what? The innocent until proven guilty is what allows a lot of predators to slip through. But see, the thing is that we came from, we came from an opposite extreme. So in the Victorian era, all a woman had to do was say that a man assaulted her and he was strung up, right? And then it started to get more balanced. 
because there were some girls who were caught in the act and then were like, oh, I'm, I'm being assaulted because we didn't allow young ladies the the latitude to be able to, to explore sexuality without being demonized. So some of them actually were like, oh, the only reason why I did it is because I was forced. And so we then went from there to the opposite extreme. And now these things are coming up for us to find balance. I'm gonna read some more of the cash apps and read some of these quite some of the, the comments here. Judah is saying Roxanne, Roxanne on Netflix explains a lot of the trauma she's talking about. Just watch the movie, don't assume. I did see it, it was, oh my gosh, that movie was the, the document. Well, it was a movie, it wasn't so much a documentary, but it was powerful, it was powerful. Look how many people, including women, defended R. Kelly. That is true, that is true. Guyanese Doll says, this is why others think that black children are more grown than they are. Why, I wanna know. Why do they think that? And Jonna says, it's been 12 years since this incident. I still hate men. I don't trust them. It's a scary thing to go through. Oh, wow. You have to get therapy because your life is your own. You have to get therapy because walking around with that hate and mistrust and brokenness, it only, it only creates the, the, the radioactive, toxic, in your own life, like your life is the one that is poisoned. So you have got to get therapy. You've got to get therapy. Go online and search for ways to get therapy. Free sends $5 and says the mother was a child. She needed help too. You know what? Mm -hmm. DMX's mother was a child. She gave, she started giving birth at what, 16? I mean, th this is, you know what? That's, that's the thing, these cycles. So DMX's mother was 16. She didn't know how to protect him, wasn't able to protect him, sent him out there. And then now he's come back and has created a gaggle of children. He has 15 children, one of which came out on Ayanla crying about how he just, he couldn't deal with his father, the toxicity, the abuse, the verbal abuse, the, the not taking accountability for his actions, et cetera. Okay, so Alexis sends ten dollars and says, "From my friend Mayola, abuse survivor." Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And then Melissa sends five dollars and says, "Why they don't believe you? It makes you numb to people." Exactly. Or oh, when they don't believe you, it makes you numb to people. I believe that. I mean, I can't imagine. Listen, when I told my mother, she immediately jumped on it, got me therapy, got thera group therapy for me, individual therapy, got therapy for she and I, and we worked through that. If I had not gotten therapy, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. So yes, absolutely, absolutely. Remember, remember, the stats say that in America, up to 40% of Black girls coming out of the house under the age of 18 was already assaulted before she even got out there into the world. So there's a lot of nonsense going on in the black community here in America and we need to fix this. We need to, we need to stand up, we need to protect our children, we need to watch our children, we need to not have our children staying over at anybody's house. We need to fix the issues within ourselves so that we don't have these issues with our children who then have to go out there and then develop a life of issues on their own. So let's 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 read some more of these. Yaisha sends five dollars and says she never said DMX was molested. No, she didn't outright say that. However, listen to what it is that she is saying. She says, "I know what it's like to be out there and have these." And we talked about this already. I'm just repeating myself now. You know, we, you just saw it. You just saw it. So. And she talked about the dealing with it with alcohol and drugs. So th this, this is what she's saying. So Claire sends $2 and says, you can't protect your kids' fathers as visitors. Um, what do you mean? Are you saying that you can't protect your children with fathers as visitors? Listen, you can protect your children with fathers as visitors. You can you can, 
Clear sends two dollars and says, "Yes, many don't even get jail sentences." Wow, but listen, you have to you listen, 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 listen. Let's, let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. I want to jump back into Roxanne's video, but I want to talk about this. Um, do you think it's an easy decision to make? Uh, to not live in the same household as the father of children. I'm sure that's not an easy decision to make, right? But there's something about that man and the relationship between the two that makes the, the living together situation not conducive. There's some people who are protecting their children from actually having the father in the home. Now, I'm not just even talking about intimate assault. I'm talking about being a terrible example of what a human needs to grow into in adulthood. And sometimes it is for the best that some parents are not in the home with the child, mothers included. There's some homes that are better off without the mother in it. There's some homes that are better off without the father in it. And there's some homes that are better off without either of the doggone parents in it. And then the grandparents step in or an aunt and uncle steps in and takes care of that child. You know, I get sick and tired of us talking about, about how a person becomes a single parent or how grandparents or aunts or what a mother is and all of this other stuff. Because I remember we had this video and uh, we, we did this video and there were people who were talking in the video. And in the video, there were people who were like, oh, if you, if you, a mother is, 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 is this and that, if you, if you, if you were not a mother, then you don't know this and you don't know that. No, 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 because every family is different. Mm -hmm. And not every person who pushes a child out of their vagina or a man who squirts up inside of a woman is a healthy parent. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. no. Right now, we have people, older people, dropping off kids at daycare, and you're like, oh, she must have had the child a little older. But then when you talk to her, you're like, oh, you're the grandmother, and okay. And then you see a, a broader picture, a broader portrait. So no, let's not, let's not, let's not paint this this pretty picture like we are all coming from Prairieville, and like there's some photo of, of, a, of a log cabin and us wearing our bonnets running through the high tall grass, being called cricket or, or grasshopper, and, and, and the, our curly hair bouncing. And no, 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 no. Some people have some very horrible, horrible upbringings, and the mother and father have the both be taken out the child's life. I mean, how do you think people end up in foster care in the first place? I mean, there's many different ways that a child gets into foster care, but in some of those instances, it's because the child is not being cared for. The child is undernourished, over abused. Um, the home is not conducive to a healthy environment for children. No, there's a lot of things going on out there and we have to stop pretending as if everybody got this pie in the sky existence. I'm sorry. Um, we're gonna listen to some more of this video. I'm gonna read some comments and then we are going to um, read some cash apps and then we're gonna turn on the phone line if we can get to it before an hour is out. All right, so let's put Roxanne up back on the, on the, on the thing. All right. Make now, yeah, right? I give most of my money away to children who are in foster care and going through situations. You know why? Because there was nobody to do that for me. Mm. There was nobody to do that for me. So I do that. I give back. I try to I try to make everybody happy. I try to keep everybody good because of what I may be dealing with on the inside. Mm. Everybody is fighting their own fucking demons. Mm. So when I think about it right now, I think about the fact that when that certain amount of peace comes along, why do you think, let me just, let me tell you why, Roxanne Shante don't drink or don't use drugs. Mm. You know why? Because I'm so afraid to find some fucking peace in it mm. that I would never stop. Mm. I'm so afraid to find some fucking peace in it. Mm. You know what? I'm not going to play her whole video. Go over to her Instagram page and watch it there. Let's skip around through it. Things and, and, and even when you're online and people are, are posting and saying negative things and saying all this other foul shit, you, you learn to just see past it. You learn how not to 
to you learn to you get a tough skin because of it. Mm. Oh my god. Let's hear the last thing she said. Go into this fucking hip hop field and they only fucking nice to you because you're a commodity and you making them some fucking money. It's like this cycle never fucking stops. Mm. Enough social workers to save you a lifetime, but maybe there is some type of therapy you get. Sometimes it's not even about wanting to grow up and be rich and have money. That's not it. It's not wanting to grow up. It's about wanting to find some peace, some happiness, a family that is yours. Oh, that's what you really want. You know something? She's gonna make me cry. She's gonna make me cry talking about that because everybody deserves a family. Everybody deserves to know what it's like to smell wonderful pies baking in the oven. Everybody deserves to know what it's like to go to sleep at night and feel safe. Everybody deserves that. And I just, you know what? Let's, um, let me read some more of these cash apps. Then I'm going to open up the phone lines and then we are going to, um, I'm going to talk to some of you. So get ready to call in. I'm going to take a few phone calls and then we're going to do cash app calls because um, some of it, we're going to see how the calls go. Aretha sends $10 and says, I'm a three-time intimate abuse survivor. I, I couldn't say the actual word, but thank you. Thank you, Aretha. And I hope that you have gotten therapy. I heard in the end of Roxanne Shante's video that she was talking about therapy. Absolutely. Jimmy sends $5 and says, childhood trauma is very real and needs attention. Thank you. Absolutely, Jimmy. Alexa sends, I know you must hate it now that Alexa has come forward with, with her mechanical voice. Nonetheless, Alexa sends $13 and says, thank you for your clarity and education, beautiful queen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexa. All right. Claire sends $2 and says, many gay men trans tricking because of intimate assault as children. Absolutely. 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 Lou Ann sends $5. Thank you, Lou Ann, for supporting the show. Thank you. Claire sends $2 and says, meaning when you are not in the home, odds increase. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. And Tanisha sends $6 and says, famous football player, intimately assaults girl in college, nothing. You know, we've got to do better. The thing about it is that with intimate assault, in many cases, there's no proof. In many cases, there's no proof that can get a person convicted. That's the issue. And Claire sends $2 and says, I agree, sometimes you have to sadly separate. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Tanisha sends $5 and says, predators are protected when they are white with money. If that ain't the truth, I don't know what is. We need. We don't even need to look too far into history with that person Brock, who intimately, who intimately assaulted that girl behind the dumpster, and these two men had to pull him off and beat him up, and then wait for the police to come, and he still got off with with just time served as six months. All right, so let me get this. Give me one second. Give me one second. I'm getting the phone lines open. All right. There we go. All right, phone lines are open, 323-488-3149. I wanna hear your, your thoughts about the subject that we're discussing. Um, 
remember when we talk about these subjects, it's not really so much about the famous people or the subjects, but us ourselves. So talk to me. What's your name? Anne. Hi, Anne. You're on the air live with Tanya. Um, go forward. So I just wanted to speak on um, the whole situation a little bit. Yes, um, please. I see a lot of people in the comments. They're saying, okay, well, he, you know, is the, you know, um, the guy that gave him the drugs, and he is a part of it as well. But according to DMS and his grandmother, it all started from when he was a child. And if that's the case, then it starts from the one, the father not being there, two, the person he's left with was definitely an abuser, and then three, the person he trusted uh, after all of that, you know, abused him as well with, you know, the drugs. So everybody that came to his life was an abuser. So I don't think anybody should be left out of the equation because I see a lot of people trying to excuse people for being children and this and that. But once you have children, you have a responsibility and a duty. Yeah. No matter what age, because my mom was a single mom. I'm sorry, not a single mom, but my mom was a teen mom as well. And that that doesn't give a 16, 17 year old, 18 year old, 19 year old person any excuse to beat somebody, even if it was a sibling, you would still have something to say about that. So that starts there. And with him, he said he never felt love strictly from the person that he was living with. So it started there and it just spiraled on down. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll say this, right? Ideally in an ideal world, once a person has a child, they, in an ideal world, in ideal circumstances, they would just rise to the full understanding of adulthood and and be able to be everything that they that that child is needing them to be. However, you know, a sixteen year old has a child. the 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 prefrontal cortex is not even fully developed until a person is around the age of twenty five. So it's like. No one is making excuses per se, but it's a level of understanding. I mean, there are some of us whose parents gave birth to us in their 20s. And even in their 20s, I mean, look at how uh, how many mistakes our parents made. I mean, it's like... I'll, no, I, I agree. I agree with you, Tanya. But at the same time, at the same time, if we're going to talk about people who have children, then it can't just be bogged down to the fact of, okay, well you're a teen so and since you're not developed you're able to just do whatever and we're going to excuse it because you're a child because at 16 you have the wherewithal to know a lot of stuff is wrong and right which is the reason why you know certain laws are based on certain age groups you have you have enough sense to know you know unfortunately unfortunately right. the data says something different the prefrontal cortex is actually what what has your impulse control, how you are able to deal with anger, how you're able to, to assess consequences for your actions. So in, like I said, in an ideal world, a 16 year old becomes a parent. And because they, there's, there's no, listen, there's nothing magical that happens when a human being comes out of your vagina that makes you knowledgeable. It only means that you've had intercourse and your body carried full, full term. It doesn't mean that you have knowledge and that you have the compassion to be able to, to take care of another human being. There's nothing. Tell me what happens. Tell me what across the board happens when a person gives birth or impregnates a person that matures them. Like maturity well, I know is... For, I know for me, I know for me, like I have, I have well, one child and I couldn't, and I had him at 19. Listen, hold on, 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 hold on. This is not about, you know, let me pass judgment on other people because of how I decided to handle a thing. Everybody deals with things differently. I'm asking you across the board, what exists in human development that makes a person more wise because they've given birth to a child? 
What happens after it, is there something in the brain that changes that makes a person more mature? Is there some life experience that gives them wisdom? I wanna know what happens that we can assess scientifically that happens to a human that makes them more mature by having a child. Um, and, and I'm actually glad that you asked that question because there's something on uh, Netflix, I can't remember the title right now, but there's something on Netflix that actually talks about that and what happens to women and men when they have children and their interaction with children and things like that. So there, there are, there is scientific. Um, well, why don't, why don't, you, why don't you, that. why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Send us the data so that we can look at the study, because according to what it is that I know, giving birth is something physiological that happens to you physically, you give birth, but there's no change that happens that makes a person more mature just merely by giving birth. Like people can make a choice to, to try to step into a certain realm, but from what it is that I know, so if you have some different data, by all means, find out, go to your history of the things that you've watched on Netflix, find what it is that you're referring to, send me the link, go to tanyatko.com, click on contact, send me the link so that we can look at the information because we cannot add into the conversation some data that you don't know and that I don't know, that you say that you heard in passing, but there's nobody on this line to verify that. So go find that and then send it to me, all right? That's perfectly fine, I can do that, I can do that Thank now. you so much for calling in. Thank you. All right. Phone lines are open, 323-488-3149. While we're waiting for the next call, I'm gonna read a few of these cash apps. Angelita sends $10 and says, I didn't speak up and others suffered too. You know what, you did the very best that you could with what it is that you had, who it is that that your own experiences, the way we are in society, you did the best that you could. You're on the air live with Tanya, what's your name? My name is Andrea. Hi Andrea, can you take me off a of speakerphone and can you turn down the TV or whatever it is in the background so we get rid of the echo? Yes, yes, I just turned it down. All right, and can you take us off speakerphone? Okay. Hello? Yes. You can hear me better now? Yes, please. Um, it's not better, but we'll just have to deal with it. Go forward. Okay, well, my um, opinion on it is, it's not really as black as white as most people think. Okay. And you know, um, I'm sorry, what did you say your name I was? Andrea. Okay, yes, Andrea. I did tell you you're live on the air right now, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and we actually just had this discussion, like, with my mom, me, and my sister, mm -hmm. because, like, growing up, you know, back in the day, our grandmother and our family would always have, like, get together, so they would have, like, friends, family friends, and things around, and... My I'm eardrum. Sorry, my child is acting. My eardrum. Sorry, it's my baby. He's acting so silly right now. Hug him. Um, pick him up. Hug him until we get off of the off of the thing, please. Okay, so the whole issue was that having all those different people around, like things would happen and no one would know until we got older. Mm -hmm. And. It was just like you said, like you, like one person said something, but then nobody believed them. Mm. And then when somebody else said something, then it was like, oh, okay, well, that other child wasn't lying. Mm. So it just really depends on the parent. And it's just a whole, a lot that goes into like how it's received from the person that it happened to or yes. how it's received from your parent or anybody around you. Because it can go a, a lot of different ways. Like my mom still struggles with that, being that they didn't believe her. But then when our cousin came out and said something about it, they believed my mom after that. Oh, wow. Got you. Thank you so much for adding that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So we have Minister Jap in the house who says, change your clothes. Darling, the cash app is dollar sign Tanya TKO. Send me, listen, bless the cash app. Send it right now. Send whatever it is that you want and I will spend that money on a new dress and model it for everyone for you. If not, hush. Shh. Shh. 
You know this is my uniform. Be quiet. Unless, of course, you're angry that you're not wearing the dress. Listen. Let's grab this call. Hi. I'm going to put you on hold for just one moment. I need to finish up a sentence that I'm saying, right? Okay. All right. And make sure that you got everything turned off and you're ready. All right. All right. So listen, if there's, if there's, listen, if there's any man out there who takes issue with my uniform, my clothing, my hair, my makeup or whatever, listen, put some money down on it. Put your money where your mouth is. Listen, I, I take gifts. Yes, I love them. I will give you my address. You can even mail the dress to me. I'll send you my size. Because we have far too many black men who are concerning themselves with women's hair and makeup and and all of them dresses and all this other stuff. <laughs> Instead of actually investing that time in not being a conquered male, if you invested that time in trying to figure out ways to create general generational wealth and regenerational wealth in your communities and inside of your own families, rather than sitting up here talking about, oh girl, your hair, your makeup, oh. Like you want, listen, you want me to go flip the switch so we could switch outfits? Is that what it is? Did you like the scoop neck? It is pretty, right? This is my favorite. So listen, bless the cat. I haven't heard nothing come through. And I know you have a cash app, Minister Jab. So send it. Send it, Mr. Jab, Jamp, or whatever your name is. All right. So listen, we're going to bring the person up on the line right now. Mm -hmm. All right. You're on the air live with Tanya. What's your name? Hey, Tanya. This is Renee. I'm calling from Atlanta. Hi, Renee. So I want to say this. I'm a health educator and First of all, I love that you promote self-care mm -hmm. and self-love and finding out how do we stop those cycles. Mm -hmm. But I don't think black people especially understand how much stress and trauma changes your DNA and it can mm. even cause extreme mental illness. Like, I mean, we already have a history of trauma from the, you know, post post-traumatic slavery disorder. I mean, there's so much trauma that happens to black people under this yes. um, society. And so that added on to whatever we experience in childhood, added on to whatever we experience in the workplace, yes. it's usually anti-black, whatever we experience, you know, in dating, like all of these layers. Yes. And it wasn't until I had to take my own self-care journey yes. that I understood how serious it was. And I had to let some family members go because they were hazardous to my mental health. Yes, absolutely. And, and like D DMX never had a chance. He was basically set up for failure at 14 from somebody. No, no long before 14. Remember, he was beat and abused from the time that he was born. Remember, the mother even had her boyfriends beating him and abusing him. So, see, I didn't realize. His, yeah, we uh, we read we story. read his story in another video that we did on DMX. Let me just say something real quick to someone in the audience. Listen, you all can stay here and you can have any opinion that you want. When you start calling people names on my platform, you get blocked. So now you have to find don't don't call people names on my platform. You have to go find another account to comment from. All right, so go ahead, go ahead. But like all of these layers and black people, like we have a history of forced, forced labor. We have a history of people who expect us to always be the underdog and to constantly and purposefully and intentionally put ourselves as a priority and take care of ourselves and teach our children to do that yes. would be a game changer. Yes, yes, yes. And like, I don't like the entire world thrives off of poverty, mental illness, and people always being in panic or fight or flight. The entire world thrives on it. Yes, yes. And, and, like, and, and you know what? If people, if people spent the time that we invest in trying to placate the issue rather than really diving in and getting help and therapy, the world would, would change. You know what I mean? The world would change. It would change. Well, and you know what? And it's 
Audrey Lord, that Audrey Lord quote that says, like, taking care of yourself is essentially a revolutionary act. And it is, especially for black people, Mm -hmm. because we already have these, all of this stuff is already darted at at us. As soon as we hit, come out the wound, even in wound, we are under attack. Our babies die, like, Mm. at a rate that's unprecedented compared to other women. So, like, to take care of ourselves and to teach our children to take care of themselves without apology, without Absolutely. explanation is revolutionary. That I just had to call in because I don't think people understand what a game changer self-love and self-care is. Mm, absolutely. You know what? Thank you so much for, for saying that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You know what? Listen, to all of you Black men who are in the comments with all of these petty little beefs and acting silly here on a Sunday, please invest that time into learning how to do some group economics, invest in some real estate, invest in some self-care, some therapy and all of that. If Black men spent half of the time that they spent on Black women's lives attempting to re-enter into our wombs by throwing tantrums and trying to siphon our energy, it's like, come on. This, this world would be a different place. Like, please invest in healing yourself. Instead of worrying about the weaves and 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 and, 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 and eyelashes, like I had some black men come out and tell me I need to put on eyebrow powder. And I'm like, Negro, what you know about some damn eyebrow powder? You spending too much time up underneath some woman frock. Get from underneath the woman frock. Go take care of yourself. Stop, don't worry about my dress, nigga, unless you're gonna send some money to the cash app. The cash app, let me, let's look for the cash app and see if the cash app has come through. We don't see the cash app from him, but he's over here talking about dresses and stuff, please. Oh my goodness. Vernon sends $5 and says, many of my clients self-medicate due to intimate assault and abuse. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what Roxanne Shante was talking about. Josette sends $5 and says, kids are underprotected. Look at that fool from FI. I don't know what FI is. Fire Island. Oh, she sends a new one, a new message. Uh, she sends a dollar and says he was on care on a website babysitting children. I don't know what we're talking about. F I. Oh my goodness, that sounds horrible. And Free sends a dollar and says my real number last four. Okay. So listen. So what we're going to do is we're going to. What time is it? We've been on for 59 minutes. So we're going to take freeze call right now. I'm going to turn off the phone lines. And I'm going to take this call. Um, Give me one second. Let me go over to and look at the last four. Here we go. Mm, mm, mm. This, This conversation is so deep here today. Hello. Yes. Hi. Free? Yes. You're on the air live with Tanya. Um, so what is your comment? Um, you know, I was thinking about my comment and I just wanted to make it clear that I see a lot of people in the comments like blaming the mother for what happened to DMX. Okay. And of course, Abuse in all of those things, it is not good. Right. But they have to understand that that woman was a child. She was a child. And it seems as if we continually hold women to the highest level. Even a child woman. She was a child. Yeah. She was abused. She was 17 when she first had her first child and it's so unfair and misogynistic for everyone to continue to blame the mother dmx throughout his years he has said things that we all have to go back and watch and, and actually pay attention we all have to make sure that we stop pointing the finger and actually look at what is going on? What is the issue? What is the issue? The main issue is 
that we all, especially black people, we need help. We need therapy. We need Mm -hmm. someone to stop these generational curses. So we need to stay on topic and stop pointing the finger. Stop pointing the finger because nowhere in this conversation in your chat is anybody saying anything about his dad just gone. Nobody said it. Nobody even mentioned his dad. It's all his mom. His so people mom, mentioned his, his father. Mom. Saying that oh, I didn't, if there was a father I in the home, see. that abuse um, is, is minimized. Um, yeah. What? Well, you, you know, know what? Well, I, I, want, I, want, I, want, I want to say this because time is, is short and of the essence. Yes. Is it possible mm-hmm. that there can be two things um, happening at one time? Um, yes, his mother did contribute to how he turned out. In, right. in some ways, we can say that she bears some fault. She was a child, right. yes. A child. However, she does mm-hmm. bear some fault. She gave right. birth to a human, and mm-hmm. that human was abused by her and in her care. So right. I, I think I think I think I think one of the things that we do is we say, well, if a thing is if a person is responsible or or aids in a thing turning out a certain way that we are blaming them and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, she can, she can be a child and also be a participating factor for how he turned out the way that he did. And this is why, this is why we need to, I'm sorry, let me just say this one last thing. I'll let you continue. This is why we need to say, you know what? I participated in this thing in this way. I Mm -hmm. allowed, listen, I allowed myself to be abused right? I'm talking about if you're mm-hmm. an adult, you know, you can say, listen, I allowed myself. You mean the, uh, the abused uh, or the abuser? Even, even listen, I'm talking about a person that's adult, an adult in an abusive relationship. You can take okay, control of that and say, I allowed myself to be abused. Or right. if you, if you did not consent in an abuse that, that you faced, you know, you can look at it from a grander scheme and look at how a particular activity, a a particular event in your life added in you becoming who it is that you are. And perhaps Mm -hmm. even on a soul level from a higher self perspective, that there's something about what it is that you call for in this lifetime to take place in order for you to be able to gain a certain level of, of growth on the other side of that event. So that you can Mm -hmm. say, you know what, this may be something that I called for from my higher self as incarnating, as God incarnate, that I allowed this to take place in my life so that I can have X, Y, Z. So Mm -hmm. it's it's avant-garde, but it gives you a sense of power and control so that you are not perpetually the victim. You take control of a situation and you say, you know what, I'm going to, if I, if I have control over this coming into my life, I have control over creating a different way in my life as well. So go ahead. I I absolutely agree with you on that. Um, The last thing I'm going to say is this. Um, Black people, especially, we need therapy we need someone to intervene to stop these generational curses that we all are facing. And it is unfortunate what he went through. And he made his declaration clear. Mm. He, he made his stance. You know, it, it's even people on Facebook saying that he's showing the grace of God. Mm. And I heard his last prayer that he said when he was with Snoop Dogg and this guy has been on his own self journey, allow him or well, he's gone now, but he went on that self journey. He spoke about it multiple times and we need to just allow people to process things, grow up, mature and just become a better person. So that's all I have to say. 
I hear you. And I also want to counter that because mm -hmm. DMX was emotionally abusive to his children and his exes. Wow. Mm. And he was not a perfect person on, mm. on this, this, this sure. singular journey. There were many different journeys going on in his life where he became emotionally abusive to his own children. Um, True. And so he is not without fault himself because by the time he right. had children, he was an adult and, right. and he also participated in other people turning out the way that they turned out. So it's like, we have a lot mm. of these cycles and vicious cycles. And because we point this out, does it mean that we're angry at DMX or we're angry at his mother or any of those things? But I think that we can, point out a thing that is a thing and say, listen, this thing is this thing. And I think that in our own I lives, I think that we have to take the initiative to say, you know what? Because one of the things that you said is, oh, we just have to allow a person to be on their journey. Um, we can call a person out for while they're on their journey, still participating in the abuse of others. We can call them out. And so he was on a journey, yes. He read some Bible verses, yes. However, he was still a very complicated and complicated yeah. man with a with a troubled past and a troubled present. He had 15 sure. children, some of which he had not seen in years. That that yeah. mothers had to cut him off from the children because he was so toxic. So True. we have to do what it is that we need to do to make sure that we're showing up in the world as we want to show up. And if we are, then being okay with that. So I, I guess um, not towards you, but I guess towards those in the comments, I'm going to kind of regurgitate what you said to me once. Mm -hmm. Do we keep abusing the abused? That's just it. We, we, the mother was abused. The he's abused. Everything he abused substances. It's just, it's just it's right. Just but you see, but you so okay. And so I'm glad that you said that because when you and I had that conversation, you were calling a woman a derogatory name mm -hmm. because you were calling her a misogynistic derogatory name for yeah. being self abusive, right? Right, right. So I don't and think I, I don't. So I, mean, I don't think I don't think anyone here on this phone line is calling DMX a derogatory name because he's self abused. No, they're, his mother, his mother. So I believe who who is calling the mother a derogatory name on this line? Well, I won't say like okay, it wasn't directly like how I called like a, a derogatory name, but it's more like oh, the mom is at fault. She's the one. She did this. So it wasn't. And that's you true. Know. But the thing is, I think that we have to, I think we have to remove our sensitivities from, mm -hmm. from, from observing, right? True. The mother contributed to him turning out the way that he did. She doesn't get a pass. She doesn't I get a pass. She get, I don't think she gets a pass. But for me, she was a child. She still, as a child, say, contributed up, to how her child turned out. Just because you were a child doesn't mean that you don't contribute to things getting broken. You, I mean, listen, when, when, I was, when I was nine, I believe I was about nine years old, um, my father, I was helping my father wash the car. I was a huge daddy's girl, right? I was helping mm -hmm. my father wash the car and I was like, you know what? I'm going to impress my dad. I'm mm -hmm. going to take the car and back it up into the driveway. Right. Nice. Uh oh. We had a very narrow driveway that was about the size of the, a little bit larger than the, the width of the car. Right. So I said, I'm going to back this up. I'm going to impress my father. He's going to come out. He's going to be so happy. Right. I started backing up the car 
And I couldn't control, I, 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 my father had told me, you turn one way when you want to do this, you turn the other way when you want to do that. And I couldn't remember which was which. So I just continued to turn the car and I heard this crunching sound and I looked on the side and the mirror was bent backwards and it was breaking apart. And in my nine-year-old self, I was like, oh no, I have really messed this up, right? Mm -hmm. I got out of the car, you know, I had to stop the car. I, I didn't stop until the whole mirror was broken off because I'm like, well, I'm, I'm in this, <laughs> you know, I'm in this, right? And so mm -hmm. I got out of the car and I realized I messed up and I needed somebody to fix it for me. To this day, my father has not, listen, my father's Caribbean, so it was none of that, oh, my sweet baby. No, 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 no. He made fun of me from that day. Um, he mocked me. And to this day, I'm always, even to this day, and I was nine at the time, I'm, even to this day, when I back up into the driveway, I always think about how just because you're going through a motion doesn't mean you have to continue with that motion. If you're doing a thing mm -hmm. and it is messing up, you can stop because if I would have stopped, the whole mirror wouldn't have broken off. But you see, I was mm -hmm. nine years old. Did I damage the car? Yes, I did. What happened when my father made fun of me for damaging the car and, and didn't let me get off of the hook with it? I got a lesson from that about how you don't have to follow through with emotion. You know how Newton's law and object in motion stays in motion unless stopped by a greater or opposing force. So mm -hmm. I gained a lesson from that, taking responsibility for my action. Just because I'm a child does not mean that I did not damage the car. I damaged the car. Okay. So can I ask you a quick question? Just like, his, want, um, just like his, just like his, just like his mother okay. participated in him being damaged. Two things mm -hmm. can be true at once. You can be a child and you can also damage a thing. Now, if I That's would have been true. in that car and ran somebody over, right? Did I run someone mm -hmm. over? Yes, I would have run someone over. Did I participate in another person getting hurt if that was the case? Yes, I would have participated in it. We can't absolve ourselves just because we're children. We have to look at a thing for what it is. And the people who are in the audience saying his mother is has blame, for him turning out that way, that is a true statement. His mother does bear fault for that. She does. The oh. father bears fault. This world bears fault. Ron mm -hmm. Reddy bears fault. There are a lot of people who bear fault. And I think that the responsible thing to do is to say, yes, you know what? I did this thing and this thing turned out this way. And take responsibility for that and say, you know what? I can make a different choice. So go ahead. What is your what is your your comment? My 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 last comment is, um, and it may seem controversial, but his mom took him to a foster care system. No one knows if at that point she just felt like she could not do it. No one knows if that was a cry for help. No one knows why she did that. She probably thought that it was better for him to be, to be there. We don't know. She might have tried. Listen, she might have. listen, 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 listen. I, I need you to be able to think about two things existing at once. Can a thing be a yeah. dress and also be red? Yes, you can have a True. red dress. So my thing is, yes, she could have been overwhelmed taking him to mm -hmm. a foster care place to, to, to help him. And could that action have also contributed to him getting assaulted, abused, and further True. damaged? Yes, it could have. True. I can imagine that if she was abusing him, she wasn't ready to be a mother. I can imagine right. that if she was allowing men to abuse him, that, she, that things were out of control for her. I can imagine, mm -hmm. but she still allowed these things to happen even if she was a child. And then also, according to the story that we have been told, she took him to this place and said that she was, that they were just going to visit. She didn't have mm -hmm. a conversation with him and say, listen, 
mommy loves you. Mommy's going to get her life together and come back for you. No, she right. said, we're going for a visit and then had somebody probably walk him into another room on a part of the tour. And then she, he probably turned around and she was gone. So she did That's that. True. And the thing is that we have to learn to accept the things that we have done. There are things that we have done that have participated in the hurt of other people. Does it hurt right. us to realize that we've done these things? Yes, it hurts to say, listen, I bear fault for this. It hurts to say that you contributed to another person's brokenness. It hurts to admit mm -hmm. that about yourself, but what does it do when you don't admit it? And I can imagine free that if you're on the phone saying this, then you make excuses for yourself and some of the things that you participate in. What would this, what would your life look like if you said, you know what? Yes, I participated in, a, in, in this happening, but what is the lesson that you learned from it? What did, um, what is, what is, how did your life expand and grow? What choice can you make different? Because I will tell you this, when you don't accept responsibility for how a mm -hmm. thing, how your life turned out in a certain way, you don't, you don't have the power to change and make a different choice because you're running and hiding. What happens if you mm -hmm. stand up there in the light and you say, you know what? I did this. I did mm -hmm. this. However, what was it that you learned from that? What choice can you make that's different? Because believe me, I know what it's like to hide. I know what mm -hmm. it's like to, to want a thing not to be a thing and not to have the light shown on you. I know what it's like to be like, well, maybe if nobody knows this, maybe if I deny this enough, then maybe, you know, I, I, uh, they won't know and I won't have to be embarrassed. So I won't, you can accept mm. that you participated in a thing without feeling the guilt, without feeling the shame. Those, those feelings do not help you. Guilt, shame, mm. those feelings don't help you. And if you need to forgive, I have an MP3 on my website, which is a forgive MP3. You know that I'm a certified clinical hypnotherapist. Get the forgive yes. MP3 and forgive yourself. People read the reviews well, on the MP3. It has done amazing things for people's lives. Go ahead. Well, really quickly, um, actually, um, I, I do understand what you're saying, but I think I'm more so coming from, I am a child of a mom that was 14 when she had her first child. And now that my mom is older, she was able to explain to me why we were raised by my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So... I'm more, I'm more open and sympathetic to her because now I understand why she did what she did because she was young. But as far as for me, like personally, mm -hmm. um, I do hold accountability very, very high. And I, I can remember when I was 21, when I had my first child, I was, I was scared to touch him. I was scared. Like my kid's father had to take care of him for like the first three months because I was scared I was going to push him or break him or something like that. And I was kind of afraid of the softness of the baby, but I'm only speaking from the place of after so much self care and listening to my mom that was a 14 year old parent and what, she went through and why we were with grandma. That's why I'm, I'm a little more sympathetic because my mom is from the sixties and they were forced to have kids. Then. So that's where I'm coming from. And listen, and you can still have empathy for your mother and acknowledge mm -hmm. that there were things that she did and that contributed to how you turned out. You can still have empathy for her. And see, this is part of the thing. It doesn't mean you hate a person. It doesn't mean you're angry with them by pointing out the facts. Your mother did mm -hmm. things that contributed to how you turned out today. True or false? Yes. True. Okay, that's Very a true, true statement. There's no anger in that. Release all of you. No, can, you can release all the anger. And, and, and this is for anybody out there. Our parents are imperfect people. They tried the very mm -hmm. best that they could with what it is that they knew. 
And did they participate in us turning out the way that we did? Yes, of course, of course. However, we can say, yes, these actions participated in me per in seeing certain things, perceiving things in a certain way. And you can still forgive that person and have empathy for that person, but the thing is still a thing. You know what I mean? It's still yes. that thing. And so I think that there are many of us who need to learn how to just pay attention to what is, because there's a lot of people out there that's like, oh, well, he's a really nice person. He only hits me when he's drunk. Right. But the fact of the matter is that it doesn't, the, the reason why, okay, so he's drunk. The, 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 the end result is he still hits you. So sure. it's like, that's the end result. You don't have to deal with a person because they had a bad back life. All right. Mm -hmm. So you had a bad back life. I, um, I, and you know, I, you know how I love dark skin, right? Remember mm -hmm. the man, I just, oh, his skin 1201 midnight, right? Mm -hmm. He had all of this trauma inside about being dark complected. He, he had all of this trauma about being dark skinned and all this other stuff. Was he beautiful to me? He, oh, obsidian, his skin. Oh, I, I, I wrote poetry about just the shine of his skin, doggone. Mm, that man was fine. But at the end of the day, he still had traumas that made him right. behave in a way that made it unacceptable for us to be in a relationship together. Okay, mm -hmm. so he had traumas. That's that we we have traumas, but that doesn't mean that every person with traumas you have to accept them and their traumas. No, I don't have to accept your trauma. I can I can empathize with your trauma, but I don't have to continue to have this trauma perpetuate in my life. I can forgive you. I don't have to speak to you again. Like when I lived mm -hmm. in my car. When I listen, living in my car was one of the best things that happened to me. Why? Because mm -hmm. this book was born from me living in my car, the book of affirmation, self love. Mm -hmm. However, the friend that I lent money to during the pandemic, my phone rang and it was his number on there. Now, I lived in my car in 2016, right? So we're talking um, four years. Because the pandemic in right. 2020, my phone rang and it was his number. I recognized it because he and I have been friends for so long that when I saw the number, I said, is this the same number of this man? Right. I don't know if he dialed me by mistake. I don't know if it was a pocket dial after four years. I don't know because I didn't answer. There is no space in my life for him. I am not angry with right. him. I'm not holding on. The displacement was one of the best things that happened to me. I became the woman that I needed to be because of the displacement. But the betrayal that he that he enacted, there's no there's no space in my life for him. It's as simple as that. I get it. Do you understand what I'm I, saying? I have forgiven him. I, I have released do. it, and I have no space. And I think that's where I'm also coming from. When I guess um, it kind of triggered me because I am at a space of forgiving my mom as a teen mom. And I, you know, it is, there's a lot of things that's just very triggering, you know, and we are in a, a, a time right now that I'm very overprotected about black women. And, you know, especially if they, you know, are open to, you know, let me know what it is or why they responded in this way. And they've, they've done this, you know, searching and soul searching. So, you know, it was just a little bit triggering for me because I love my mom. I love her. And I was a girl, 14 years old. After my grandma passed away, I was on the street. So I've experienced some of the same similarities as you from 14 up until about 19. I've slept in parks. I've done a lot of things mm. just to grow myself up as this 36-year-old woman that I am today. Mm. And I'm just very, you know, protective because I know um, that 
the struggles that black women go through, and I don't want to like get us off topic, but the struggles that we go through, they are deep. Yes. They are very and you know deep. what? And and we do not get on the other side of that struggle by minimizing. So I understand your mother the was a, I understand your mother was 14. However, there were actions yes. that she participated in that led to you being in a very dangerous situation where your life was at yes. risk, right? Yeah. And you can forgive her and still acknowledge because you know what your pain matters. What you went through mm -hmm. between 14 and 19 on the street, it matters. It's not it's not erased because somebody said, oh, well, I was 14. Your pain is not erased because of that. You have lived experiences that were a result of actions that you could not consent to because it precipitated you even coming here. You understand right. what I'm saying? So, yes, your mother was 14. And yes, you can forgive her. Yes, you can accept that. Yes, you love her. However, there were actions that she participated in that still led you to being on the street. And I hope that you're working with a therapist right now. Do you have my forgive MP3? I do not. Actually, I just subscribed today to your platinum. So um, I wanted to subscribe to your platinum, but, you know, I wanted to um, this weekend, you know, I'm off on the weekends. I went through a lot of your videos and I was commenting like it was just today. And, you know, just mm -hmm. looking at the content that you presented, it was very real and it triggered me at some times. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it, it tested a part of me that I was afraid to explore mm -hmm. and I'm actually in the process of exploring it now. Okay. So another thing is um, I'm deeply Bible-based, um, very religious, you know, and it's just, it's just this place. I'm 36. So um, I think that I've hit um, an age where I'm really starting to get wisdom. And I'm really starting to understand myself. So I'm, I'm just really growing right now. And I will go on your site and look at all the things that are there. But my first thing was, sis, and I'm not trying to be funny, but I wanted to see, you know, through your videos, what were you really talking about? What was your, your stance saying? Today, I, I just made it up in my mind because, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to support this sister. Mm. I'm a supporter because she is, you know, speaking the truth. And it may, the truth is so diluted nowadays. But for me, it, it made me look inside myself. And I'm actually exploring different things okay. that I wasn't allowed to because the, the Bible, like, uh, kind of, scared me into a place where I just was oppressed. I was just oppressed. I and you still, and I'm you still with it? As of right now, no. I've been out of it for about, probably about seven months. Okay. And I still will like watch online and I still will go on different sites, you know, to, you know, hear the word of God and it, I, I'm afraid, I'm going to be honest, I'm afraid to explore some of the things you talk about. Um, and I'm just breaking, I'm breaking out of that, you know, just mental oppression right now. So I won't like say okay, like gotcha. I'm a hundred percent there. I got you. So, well, you know what? We all have to do what works for us. And as long as you're doing what's working for you, then I, su I support it. So we appreciate you calling in free. We yeah. have gone way over time now. So that is the yeah. full allotment for our show right there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sis. All right. Ooh. All right. So we have gone over time. I, you know, th th listen, we, 
we all need we all need something different and i and i truly believe in my heart that the caller needed the conversation that we had and so we we had the conversation and i hope that so if there is so listen cuz i see a lot of people saying a lot of different things if you benefited from that conversation please put up the number 5 if you benefited from that conversation if there was something in that conversation for you Please put up the number five. Um, if you did not benefit from the conversation, you can put put up a number six, then let's see. So it looks like there's a lot of people who benefited from the conversation. So there were some people who were like, next caller, hang up and all this other stuff, but there were people who benefited from it. And there's the numbers are coming in very quickly, so I can't grab them all, but yeah, so there. Then I see some sixes coming in. Some of you out here, listen. I mean, it, it's like that sometimes. There are some people who they feel a thing. There's a lot of fives, a lot more fives coming in than sixes. So my only hope is, and listen, I, I understand what it's like because sometimes I go in the clubhouse and there are a lot of people who talk for a really long time, and you don't really get your chance to talk and stuff like that. So I understand what it's like to want to get to, you know, to the to the next call. However, I'll say this, I can only hope that one day if you ever call in and you need that extra exploration, I can only hope that we have the latitude to be able to assist you in your journey during that time. I'm going to read some of these cash apps and then we're going to get out of here. I appreciate all of you. So, we have Josette which sends a dollar and says, FL, he was a teacher. Oh, Florida on a particular website. His name was Xavier Alexander. Okay, I don't wanna advertise the name of the website, but I see what you're saying. So, all right, thank you. Sierra sends $25 and says, can't wait until the, the text notifications start. Thank you. Thank you. Don't worry. I'm going to get the, I know we're on late right now. So let me look. I need some time to look into the solution. Don't worry. We, I got you. I got you. All right. Josette sends $2 and says, people we trusted with children are the predators. Well, of course, because you cannot prey on children if you're not trusted with them. It goes hand in hand. You have to be trusted in order to be able to violate that trust. Because it's always the people that you never think would do it because we're so busy looking for a devil with red horns. Um, Ranny sends $5 and says to make the haters mad. Hey, let's make the haters mad. Thank you, Ranny. All right. Timmins sends $5 and says this caller talks like someone, something happened to her son. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I, that 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 came in at 3.30 p.m., so that was 20 minutes ago. So were we still, I think we were still on the call with free at that time. So um, I, I don't know, but you know what? We, the things that trigger us, there's a reason why they trigger us because there's something about in our own life that, is, that it's triggering. Ayana sends $2 and says his parents are responsible for his pain, period. There were a lot of people that aided into his pain, a lot of people, because... There are some parents who hate their children and they want to hurt their children. Does that mean that we get to hurt the children too because their parents didn't care? No, we as human beings, we need to also take responsibility for how we show up in treating others. And, and okay, so Laron sends $5 and says, yes, she needed the convo, sounded sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Jessica sends $10 and says, thank you. Well, thank you, Jessica. Thank you. And um, let's see. Sophia. Sophia sends a dollar and says, it's taboo talking about intimacy in the home. But what do we do? You know, it's like we have to have these tough conversations. We must. We must. All right, so on that note, I'm gonna read a few more of these comments. Um, he mentioned not stopping smoking weed. He was addicted to 
crack cocaine that he had to control. Maybe he was not perfect, but he never refused to recover. Um, he did say that he refused to live a life without stimulants. So that doesn't sound like a person is, is willing to recover. So, um, Xenia is saying abused people tend to abuse others, not always, but if, and when they refuse to acknowledge or get help to heal from their own abuse, they also show up as victims of their victims, a mask to deny accountability. Most abusers mock the idea of getting help from professionals because they can't stand the vulnerability. In therapy, there's no one but you and your issues, and you have to unpack how things affected you, but how you affect others because of it. Once adulthood, you know where you, and then the comment is cut off, okay? All right. And you know what? And that's the thing. And so listen, I'm gonna give you all this message. For those of you who are going to go into therapy, Lay it all out there. Everything that you have thought, everything that you have considered how you process information, don't make your therapist have to try to guess. Um, give your therapist the information that they need to be able to assist you. I just had a life coaching session um, this past week. And during the session, I could have let my life coach ask me a whole bunch of questions and then get to the root of it, right? But I felt a certain way and I needed assistance getting through the stuckness that I was feeling. And I laid it all out there. And I was able to have an explosive exploratory session because I just put it all out there because I really, really, truly wanted the help. So help your therapist, help your life coach help you. And on that note, listen, I love you all so very, very much. Go out there and love one another. Most importantly, what? Love yourself. And part of loving yourself is what? Part of loving yourself is doing what it is that you need to do to take care of yourself. Whether that is opening up and talking about something that happened to you or not talking about it until you're able to, or doing what it is that you need to do to just protect and care for yourself. Whether that means speaking up, staying silent, you have to know what is in the greater good for where it is that you are. There is no blueprint. Let me give you a hug because I know this was a tough conversation. Hug me, hug me, hug me, hug me. Oh, my mic is in the way. Hug, 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 hug. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, okay. So listen, I will see you all in the next video. Um, you can come to my website, tanyatko.com. Leave me a message over there. Remember, there's the Forgive MP3. I'm working on a few more things to be able to help you all. I have a few courses and stuff coming up, like um, having your boundaries respected, manifesting money, getting rid of the negative self-talk. Um, all of I have a lot of things coming out to be able to assist us. So I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure that you're on my mailing list. The links on ways that you can support the show are below. You can become a monthly subscriber to a, a different plan, 19 a month, $5 a month, $9.99 a month. It really depends on you. The links are below inside the video. Let me check the cash app one last time before we jump out of here. And we did have one last one from Daphne who sent $5 and says, love your content. Thank you. I love you too. See you all in the next video. Peace.